Hello everyone, welcome to the first chapter of the Business Analytics program. Uh, in this lecture, we cover some introduction about the course. Uh, because we are dealing with the programming, so we need to know a little bit about the computer and how does it work. And then at the end of the lecture, we introduce a little bit about how to start programming using the Genie and the Python shell. Also, we introduce a function, a built-in built function in the Python called print function. So this is the main structure of the, this lecture. So let's get, get started. So every computer that uh, you have, basically it has several hardwares. Uh, hardwares are the basically component that you can see them physically like the monitor, keyboard, mouse, printer or speakers. Uh, the main part of the computer is a case. So it doesn't matter you are using the personal computer or laptop. Uh, all of them are built on the basic these components except the printer which is a separate device. When uh, you when you are using laptop, basically all of these components are compact to each other, but basic function of them all are the same. The main component of each computer is a case. So the case basically has several parts. The first part you can see is a power supply that supplies the power and electricity to the computer. And then we have a bunch of other stuff like sound card, which is a part that is taking care of the uh, sound, like you can hear the voice from the speaker. So this is the main part that handles that. And then we have video graphic cards. Uh, you know, when you see a picture or text, whatever you see in your screen or monitor, uh, video graphic card is uh, responsible for converting the data to the uh, visible and understandable picture on the screen. The next component that we have is a hard disk or uh, sometimes called storage. This is a place that you store all your files, data and uh, movies, pictures and so on. So this is a place that you store your information. We will talk a little bit about the hard disk later. The main component of the case called motherboard. Motherboard is the place that all of these components are integrated and uh, all of the, the working part of the computer that handles all of the tasks that you ask from the computer. So first look at the hard disk and then we will talk about more about the motherboard and the, its functionality. So basically a hard disk or hard drive is the electromechanical data storage that it has uh, several disks as, as you can see in this picture and it has a magnetic covered uh, disks. There are multiple disks here and then there is a what we call a head which writes and uh, read the data from the these magnetic plates. The data are stored in a binary form that is all the data that you see any pictures any movie any file that you have all of them are converted to zero one and uh, stored in the hard disk and then reader you can see in this graph like this uh, read the data there is some the access of the data is a random manner it means that the data may be stored in the different places but uh, and the computer identify those required information and read them. But the data is not necessarily stored sequentially. So this is basically structure of the hard drive or hard disk that you can see. There is a bunch of other stuff. This reader and writer is managed by the magnetic part that it moves around and uh, read the data. This plate or these disks, they are covered by the magnetic and uh, we call e each of these uh, plates are divided into several sections that we call it sector and uh, 
Uh, recently, the new version of the hard drives are... Uh, now, let's talk about the motherboard. Motherboard is the main component of the computer that all of the items are connected. So you can see hard drive, power, all of them are connected to the motherboards. And then you have a bunch of sockets or the place that you can connect the devices, different devices like video cards that we just talked about. Also, motherboard has two more components that uh, they are very important in the processing of the data. One of them is uh, called central processing unit or CPU. Some people, they call this is the main brain of the computer that handles all of the tasks that we ask from the computer. And then we have something called RAMs or randomly accessed memory. Uh, we will talk about these two items in the next slide. But all of them are connected through motherboards and motherboard is the main component. You can see different shapes and different uh, structure of this motherboard. But basically, most of them are perform same functionality and they are responsible to handle all the tasks that you ask from the computer. So the CPU or the central processing unit is the one that do, does all the calculation, all of the tasks that you uh, ask from the computer. Whenever you ask the computer to do anything, all of this goes through the CPU. So CPU handles those. And because we have a fan that uh, helps to circulate air to cool the CPU, the next part is a random access memory. Uh, this part is works closely with the hard drive. The hard drive is uh, very difficult to retrieve the information. This RAM is called short-term memory. Whenever you want to run a program, the data that you need, all of them are copied to the RAM. And then because it has a smaller amount of information, it works very fast. So whenever you open the program, all of the required data are copied uh, to the RAM. When you open, a, for example, game, you can see they are show some bars that says copying. That copying are the process that the required data is copied to the RAM. And then uh, you can see your um, computer is very uh, work very fast. So the power of computer is mainly defined by the RAM. So the, the better and stronger the powerful RAM that you have, the, your computer is going to be very fast. So these are the basic components of the computer, each computer that you have. It doesn't matter you are working on the personal computer or, or the laptop. All of the, all of the devices are uh, included and uh, you just need to have uh, ideas that how the computer works. Now, all of the components that we attacked so far, we call them the hardware. That the hardware is the parts that you can physically see them. But we have something called software that handles a computer and mechanical part of the computer. So like any program, like the games that you have or Microsoft Word you have or the operating system like the Windows or Macintosh that you have, all of them are called software. Basically, softwares are the sequence of the instruction that tells to the computer to do some specific tasks. These tasks are handling the hardware, and uh, you can see the sequence of the result in your monitor. Every instruction is run and executed by the computer and then you can see the result your screen so the goal of the programming is that to design and implement the computer program the computer program is a sequence of the steps or tasks that says do this first and then do this task second and so on so you are looking for the sequence of the tasks that needs to be done by a specific program so the programming is a designing implementing and testing the computer program so the main objective of this course is that you can be able to develop a small programs and uh, do some specific analysis basically focused on the business analytics part 
So whenever you want to start programming, you need to have an algorithm. The algorithm is a basically says the sequence of the task that you need to ask computer to do for you. So it's basically like the recipe or instruction that asks to follow and make final product. So when you want to write the al algorithm, you need to have a sequence of the act tasks that you need to follow. Uh, most of the time we use a graphical presentation of the algorithm which called uh, follow chart. So the follow chart is a graphical representation of the steps that uh, tells exactly the detail of the program that we want to write. So for example, we are looking for a program. We want to write a program that says the number that we have, the number n that we have is an even number or odd number. So the steps is you read the number n and then find the reminder of the number when we divide it by 2. If the reminder is 0, then that number is even. Otherwise, if the reminder is 1, basically not 0, uh, then the number is odd. So this is a steps that we have. This is a basically our algorithm. So the follow chart that you can see here, it starts by the word start in the oval and the ends it has a starting point and the ending point. The follow chart is using some graphs, uh, some pictures, rectangle and the diamonds and some arrows. These rectangles uh, present an activity or a task that should be accomplished. For example, the first one says read the number n. We, are, we have to write uh, some codes that read the number n. And then it has a arrow and goes to the second rectangle. And the inside of the second rect rectangle says put reminder of the n divided by 2 as a x. So here we are doing some tasks. We are giving x a value that the value of the reminder of the n divided by 2. For example, we have the number of the, let's say n is 15 divided by 2. The reminder of the number 15 divided by 2 is 1. So x has a value of the 1 here. And then it goes to the next step. In the next step, we have the diamond. In the diamond, you can see there is a question. We are checking some status. Most of the time, diamond represent the decision-making process. The decision-making process may have several outputs. Here we have just two outputs. Uh, here the question is, x, x is equal to zero or not? So it has two possible answers. It either is yes or no. So if it is no, then the result is that the number n is odd number. But if the result is yes in the diamond, then the number is even. So in both cases, if either is the number n uh, is even or odd, then the program is ended because we determine the value of the number n is odd or even. For the number 15 that we have, x is 1, so x is not 0, so we have to follow this path. The result of the decision is no, then the number is odd number, and then we end. Now, let's try number 10. If we read number 10, now we find the reminder of the number n divided by 2. So 10 divided by 2, the reminder of this equation is 0. We go to the next one. The value of the x is 0, so we go to the next step. So the value is 0, so we have to go through this path because this side is says yes. And then because we are following this path, then n is an even number. And then we go to the end of the program. So you can see this is a very clear picture of the algorithm and the codes that we want to write. Follow chart has a starting point and the ending point and, and some of tasks, some operations and some decisions. The decisions are represented by the diamond and the tasks are represented by the rectangle. So these are the simple rows and each task is connected. So you cannot have any disconnected tasks. So every step should connect to next step. 
and tells you after this step what kind of the steps we have to take. This is a very simple example of the writing a follow chart and algorithm. So once you have the follow chart, you can start programming. So in this course, we are covering the Python. The Python is the open source programming language, which is developed by a Guido van Rossum. The open source program means that you can easily download it without paying any money. So the question is why we should use the Python. First of all, as we just mentioned, it's uh, free and uh, you can use it in several machines. Uh, that means uh, it's, it's a cross-platform. And also it's a powerful. You can apply it in many fields, in the data science, in the web browsing and uh, all other areas that we will cover in this chapter. Even uh, in this course, we, we cover Python version 3. 3.x means that this we are focusing on the Python version 3. We have some older version of the Python. The syntax and how to write the program in Python 2 is different than Python 3. So each version of the program has its own Python. If you have not downloaded and installed the program, go through this website and download the version that's compatible with your computer. If you are using the Windows-based machine, make sure that you are using, you are downloading the Windows-based Python. And if you are using the Macintosh, you, you make sure that you are using the Macintosh version. So, when you have uh, installed the program, the next step is uh, starting the programming. We have several ways to create a computer program. One of them is the Python shell that I'm going to show it in the moment. And then we have the idle. Also, you can use uh, what we call it integrated develop environment or text editor. Genie that you have is, call, we call it in the integrated development environment. So it's very comfortable and easy. You can, uh, it's a very clear way and an understandable way of the writing the program. But also Python shell and idle is a very good uh, way of the practicing. So let's open the Pyth uh, Genie first and start the first programming that we have. So the easy way is that you open and start and uh, go to the Genie that you have installed. So once you have the Genie, so click on that and you can see there is a, uh, here there is a, some icons, some menus, files, edit, search, document and so on. So whenever you want to start new programming, you need to open the, click on the new here. So you can see new tab called untitled has been uh, opened up here. So this white area, we call it scripting area, the place that you write your code or your comments. We will cover most of these keywords and the programming style, but for time being, let's uh, write our first program. One way of the showing the result is the using the print function that we showed in the first lecture. So the print function is basically says show this text on the screen. So let's type uh, hello everyone. So this is you see uh, when uh, you have to write first print and then open the parentheses, put double quotation and type whatever you want to show on the screen and then close the double quote by using a double quote and then close the parentheses. So this is, we call it first comment or first line of the quote that you have. So you can see there is number one here. So this is your first program. Before running the computer, before running this program, you need to save this. So let's save this one. And for time being, uh, save, uh, on the desktop and I call this exe01-01 that means this is uh, most of the time I'm gonna use this structure that means this is related to the first lecture and this is the first under underlined first one and then that means this is the first program of the first lecture or dot 
GY that says this is a Python. So for timing, I'm gonna uh, save in the desktop and then I save it. So you can see here in this document type, in the documents tab, you can see I have two Python files. One of them is a hello.py that you have seen in the first lecture. <laughs> and the second one is the, is the exe01 underline 01 dash part we just created. So let's print this um, and you can see the result that whatever I typed inside of the print is showed up here. So this is uh, the result of the program that I ran. And you can see there is something here. It says program exited with code zero. Code zero means that nothing was wrong with the computer. It with the program we just wrote it's perfectly working and fine so and then the next line says press any key to continue so if you press any key on your keyboard it's gonna close this screen now let's uh, whenever you want to start programming you have to learn some of the keyboards or reserved words that uh, the program has that means these words are reserved to do some specific tasks. I cannot use them for other purposes. For example, print is one of them. Print, we call this function. That means basically it has been developed by other people to do some specific tasks. We will cover most of them in the course, but uh, for timing, you need to learn that you cannot use this print for other purpose than just showing the result on the screen. Now let's, uh, uh, the next item, the next thing that you have to know about the Python is that Python is a case sensitive. That means if I use uppercase, it's different than the lowercase. So if I type print and then say the text that I have here, hello, you can see once I say it didn't change the print. So if I run this, I'm going to get the error. It says name print is not identified. You will, but the first line works perfectly fine. So it means my first comment doesn't have any problem. It works perfectly fine. And most of the functions that you have in the Python lowercase that means all of the letters are there in the lowercase now let's save this and run this one more time so press on the key here to close this one and then press on the execute and now you can see we have two lines showed up here both are says hello everyone so that means we are fine so this is a genie now also we have a Python that we have installed. Let's go through the Python and you can see under the folder of the Python we have idle and one thing here that we call it Python shell. First open the shell. You can see it's basically similar to this one and then um, there is Python 3.6 and some explanation of the Python and says type help if you want to know about the uh, license you can see there is a three arrows here it basically means that you can start typing this shell is not performing any task so the computer is just asking you give me instruction so let's try the print hello everyone print open the parentheses double code and uh, hello everyone and close the double code and uh, close the parentheses so now press the enter to see the result you can see there is no any menu so basically you cannot save anything here but we have the idle python idle just you just see so let's go through the python idle then you can see there is an idle here and then if you open this idle you are going to see that each python shell appears and it has the same thing that you just you foresee python 3.6 and uh, some more experience. and you can see exactly same arrows that you just saw in the python shell now let's try print hello everyone here 
uh, and you can see this is very nice and you can see whenever you start a function it changes the color everything is colorful and uh, you can see some uh, hints here that uh, how you can run, write a program uh, it gives some instruction and whenever you close the parentheses it's identified the opening parentheses so once you have typed all the information you just need to click on the enter and you can see that immediately shows the result the same as the one that we have here but you can see it has some tabs here some file uh, some tabs that you can open if you want to start scripting write the program code you can use uh, new file and uh, start and write your program so let's write print hello everyone hello everyone the good thing about this area is that whenever you do any mistake you can come back and fix it before running this one you need to save this file so let's save this file by the file save and uh, let's put on the desktop so i call this one exe01 uh, underline 02 and you don't need to put the python.py for this one because you're exactly using the python but in the genie you need to specify that now once you have done you can see it shows the path the place that you put your file so it says in the file in the drive c on the desktop and the, the name of the file is exe 0.1 underline 0.2 and it's a python program you can see it automatically shows the python remember that in the genie you have to specify but in the when in, you are using the python shell you don't need to specify to run this program you just need to go through the run menu that you have here and run and then run module and you can see there is a shortcut key called f5 so both is gonna work so let's press run model module and see what's the result and you can see it comes back to the python shell and shows the result the good thing is about python shell and genie is that you can fix your programs you change the let's say i had a problem here i put the print as a capital and then before running any program you need to save this so let's save this one you can see there is an asterisk before the file or at the end of the file so it means this file is not saved so let's save this one and you can see both asterisks are gone so the good thing about the python shell is that you can edit in the text editor that you have you can edit your file now run this and see what's the result so run run the module and you can see again uh, it gives me the error the error is uh, in the red color and it says trace back the last line that you have called and the files that you have uh, the name of the file is this one and the error happened in the line number one so you can see this is line and uh, it says the line that the error happened is this line print capital p print hello everyone and it says name error that your we will co covers the errors in the some of the basic errors that may happen and then it says the print is not defined so the the problem is the sprint that we have so let's fix it back and then put the small letter and then save it there is a, some short keys in the python shell uh, you can use control s to save the file you can see here control s is a shortcut that you can save but for timing i'm going to use the file uh, in the menu that you can see how the files work once you have saved this you can run this and run the module this is a result so this is basically introduction to the python shell now let's get back to the lecture so we started programming and uh, we see how start by the genie and the python shell you can see i put some comments here sharp sign that says this is a comment the comment is not gonna run and affect your program it's just a hint for someone else that reads your program uh, genie also has a uh, documents 
all of the you know whatever you open the folder you can see the python files that you have the program files that you have and then the status what you have done for this one what kind of uh, stuff that you have for example you open the file and you uh, save the file and you can see the timeline and, and the change that you have we call this area uh, the white area as an editor you can change whatever you want to do and write your program and your output is going to be in the separate file and the separate window in, which is a black window and so we have hello the program hello this is uh, you can see that in the genie this is a function and the hello word putting in the quotation is a uh, input of this function or argument of the, this function so basically we are telling show this hello world exactly as i write here inside of the quotation mark on the screen spelling is very important in the programming for example if i write print versus print change the n to the m the program is not, not going to understand also the python is a uh, case sensitive as we just saw I change the P, small p, to, to the capital P and the program, the Python, did not understand. So also, I have here small more examples. I put x equal to 10. That means the value of the x, this means that the value of the x is 10. Print the value of the x is, and it's inside of the quotation mark. That means exactly print this and i put comma print the value of the x so you can see here once i run this it says the value of the small x is 10. now i put x equal to capital x equal to 2 and then i say print the value of the capital x is the value of the x capital x and the close parenthesis so you can see in the result section, the value of the capital X is a 12. So this means the computer is very restrict about the case sensitivity. So if I put small x is going to be the value of the capital X is 10, not 12. If I put the instead of the capital X that I have here. So it's very important. Spelling is very important and then the Python is a case sensitive. Now this is a Python shell and uh, we already introduced this one and how to open the scripting area in the Python shell and uh, run the program. One of the functions that we talked in this lecture is a print function. The print function basically is that you are asking the computer to show the result on this screen. If you do not put this print in the genie or the python shell you are not going to have any result on your screen so this function shows the output of the program that you wrote the print can have multiple input or argument so you can use multiple input inside of the print so the syntax of the function is a print open the parentheses the first value the, that you have be represented by value one and put the comma and do the second value that the, the value two and put the comma and so on so basically there is no restriction about the number of the arguments or number of the print input that you can put inside of the print for example here we have a print function it says print the result of the seven plus two is so you can see i put this inside of the quotation mark and then i put a comma 7 plus 2 comma ex, qu quotation mark exclamation mark and the closing quotation and don't forget the close the parentheses so you can see this is the result of this syntax it says the result of this the result of the 7 plus 2 is 9 and the exclamation mark and if you do not put any value inside of the print function it's going to just print the empty space so this is the introduction uh, of the print function. Here you can see this is a function. Inside of the print function, we have several inputs. In the next lecture, we will talk about the type of these variables and what does mean these quotation marks. Now let's do more example. Print 
3 plus 4 is 7. So basically, print function is doing some mathematics and adding two numbers. 3 plus 4 is 7. So it does the calculation and shows the result in the uh, screen. So we have the second example. It says, do you know 6 times 7 is 42? So you can see we have three inputs. The first one is inside of the quotation mark. Whenever we put anything inside of the quotation mark, we call this as a string that is going to be one of the data type that we will talk in the second lecture of this course. And then we have a comma, six, six multiplied by seven. This asterisk means multiply. Six multiplied by seven is 42. And uh, this is also is a string because it, we put inside of the quotation mark. So the result of this syntax, the result of this code is, do you know 42 is 42? So it's a little obvious. And then we have another one, the print function, use of the print function is high, and then it shows the high, and then we have the by, and then we can have multiple string values. It says print, high, comma, how are you doing today? So this is uh, exactly as we should. In the next lecture, uh, we will talk how to put the result in multiple lines and uh, give a very nice structure. But for this lecture, just use a comma. Now, the next example is that print Python is so cool. And uh, you can see exactly what uh, we have here. And then we have one more example of the print function it says my lucky numbers are 3 plus 4 uh, comma and inside of the quotation mark comma 12 plus 8 so you can see we have a string we have the some numbers and one more strings and uh, some more uh, numbers that they are add up my lucky number is 3 plus 4 becomes 7 and 12 plus 8 becomes 8 so this is another example of the using the print function. So you can basically have multiple input inside of the print function, but you have to follow some specific rules. Now, in the next lecture, we will talk about how to show the result in multiple lines when using the print function. And also we will introduce data types that we have in the Python. You see here we introduced strings but we will talk more about the string and how we can use also we talk a little bit about the numbers but we will cover more about the numbers and other type of the data that uh, python has so this is the end of the first lecture thank you